So we start today's episode with Mario Kart Double Dash, a game which came out in 2003 in Europe, maybe slightly earlier uh, around the rest of the globe. I can't remember that small detail, but if you owned a Nintendo GameCube back in the day, you would have had Mario Kart Double Dash. Um, personally, for me, this was my favourite Mario Kart game up until Mario Kart 8 came out. Now, you know, don't blame me, you know, uh, I loved Mario Kart on the Super Nintendo, the original incarnation, um, and I really didn't like uh, the N64 version of Mario Kart, but Double Dash was fantastic. One, uh, because it really, really showcased the fantastic graphics of the Nintendo GameCube back in the day, and it really does still hold up today. Um, but there was also the new feature that enabled you to use a second character. Um, I think it probably would have been better implemented if the second character uh, could have been controlled by the second person playing, which you know wasn't an option. But other than that, um, this was one of my favourites. Um, I remember when I first bought this, um, there was an actual reason why I bought it. So I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, when I picked up Mario Kart Double Dash, I traded in my original GameCube to get a new GameCube. But well, that wasn't because my GameCube was already broke, but if you bought Mario Kart Double Dash as part of a bundle pack, you got a bonus CD or disc, and inside was a special Zelda Collector's Edition. On that Zelda's Collector's Edition, you got Zelda 1 and 2, Ocarina of Time, and Majora's Mask, and a demo of The Wind Waker. So that was also a secret reason for why I also bought Mario Kart Double Dash, but I did want the game in itself. So let's just briefly look at Mario Kart Double Dash. As you can see now on the screen, it's still got some really, really, really vibrant graphics, and I think there's a little nod here to Mario Kart 8 with that kind of vibrancy. Um, it was also the first time in my recollection in a Mario Kart game where you could actually have two characters on a vehicle and the ability of changing them. I think you pressed uh, the Z button or something, the Z trigger button. Um, and that enabled you to change the character. Um, it was one of my favourites during the day, but I can't really put a, uh, put my finger on why I enjoyed it so much, but um, I think for me it was just it had fantastic music, it had a, a really good roster of characters, and for me I didn't get much pleasure out of Mario Kart um, 64. There was just something about it that didn't sit well with me, uh, as you can see here. Uh, for your viewing pleasure, I made sure that I pulled it out and had a go on my own GameCube. And you can see here, I'm doing rather well. Yes, it is edited, but of course I want to make myself look fantastic. And uh, if I remember rightly, I think I win this race. So please enjoy the last few seconds of this race. <laughs> Nintendo GBR wins! Flawless victory. Oh no, that's the wrong game. Okay, so next up, a game that some of you and some others of you may not be familiar with, F-Zero GX on the GameCube. Now, I will admittedly tell you that I didn't own F-Zero when I had my GameCube all those years ago. I was a huge fan of F-Zero on the Super Nintendo. One, because it was fast. Uh, two, because uh, it did something fantastic with the uh, FX chip and kind of made everything kind of like look like it was in 3D and kind of like you could rotate and it was fantastic, which they also used on Mario Kart, funnily enough. Um, but the reason I decided to include this was when I um, eventually picked up F Zero, um, which was after I had my original GameCube, I remember actually thinking just how good the game was. Um, obviously it was made alongside uh, Sega and we all know how good they are at making arcade games. Um, and even when I dug this out just to make um, this part of the GameCube memories, um, I actually thought, wow, you know, this game does still look really, really fantastic for its age. But you really get that sense of the arcade racer. Uh, we all remember going to the arcades um, if you were brought up in kind of, I suppose, uh, the 80s, early 90s and going, and have, uh, going down the local arcade and having a go on your favourite one. Um, granted, F-Zero um, 
uh, was not in the arcades when I went down, but it just captures that style and that panache of kind of uh, the arcades from the kind of like late 80s, early 90s. So, although I didn't own F Zero, I, I really do believe that um, this is a fantastic game. And I remember seeing lots of videos and reading articles on it and really wanted to own it, it's just one that I didn't pick up. So if you did own F-Zero back in the day and you was a fan of F-Zero, then let me know what you think in your comments. So without further ado, though I do, rather, um, please enjoy the rest of this race. And if you look really carefully at this point, you can see my exquisite skill uh, taking place here. Uh, you can see I'm just working my way up through the pack of uh, elite speed racers and kind of pushing through them. And uh, I, I feel the need that I must show you how good I am. Although it is the first level, but let's not worry about that. You see, pushing up here, first place. Oh yeah! Now, here is a game which I'm sure all of you are familiar with, and it has such an exquisite opening sequence that I'm going to let that speak for itself. See you shortly. These amiibos? Okay, look, I am gonna admit it, okay? Super Smash Brothers Melee completely baffled me. Um, I remember everybody talking about this game and that you had to own this game. And I wasn't so much of that opinion. Um, Super Smash Brothers Melee uh, sorry, Super Smash Brothers on the original um, format and Nintendo 64. Um, I, I, it completely passed me by. It wasn't wasn't for me at all. I don't even remember thinking about that game. Uh, so when this game came out, uh, I kind of got swept up in the excitement, and I did purchase myself a copy of it. And to be fair, I did get many hours of enjoyment out of it. Although saying that, a lot of the time it baffled me. Um, I didn't really find the mechanics of the fighting that good. I'd kind of been brought up on various other fighting games and uh, it was a little bit fiddly. Uh, it just wasn't for me really, but um, I know that there are a lot, a lot of Super Smash Bros. fans out there that would totally disagree with me and maybe even show me how to play the game properly. But that being said, um, I have um, stayed strong and I did buy Super Smash Bros. for the Wii and I also bought it for the Wii U and I can also say that <laughs> it still baffles me. I find the fighting mechanics strange and uh, I don't really get much enjoyment out of it. Although that being said, I totally respect um, that there is a huge audience for Super Smash Bros. And I had to include it in my GameCube memories simply because I owned a copy and I just remember that there was just so much love for this game that I just could not include it. But anyway, to cheer you up about how rubbish I am at this game, just watch this. Please don't laugh. Break the targets! Ready? Go! Mm -hmm. 
Nintendo GBO is rubbish. Nintendo GBO is rubbish. So, last up today on GameCube Memories, a game I'm sure, again, we've all played, have different opinions on, uh, but uh, Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker was probably one of the best experiences you could have had on the GameCube. Um, it also had quite a nice introduction, so let's have a look at that. So, we all remember the title screen. So, who am I going to call myself? Well, of course, I thought long and hard about this, and of course, Ninty GBR, because I couldn't fit in Nintendo GBR. So, The Wind Waker, when it was released, uh, it was a big deal. It was uh, a game that had courted a lot of media attention, partly because of the fact that it was cell shaded and we kind of moved away from the kind of more adult link that we saw in Ocarina of Time. So there was a kind of a lot of people that oomed and aahed about this. Uh, Nintendo tried to make it a more attractive package. Uh, if you bought the Legend of, Zen, uh, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker um, at a particular time, you got again a special bonus disc. And this bonus disc included Ocarina of Time, uh, which was obviously um, for the first time I think on the GameCube as a disc, and also uh, was Ocarina of Time the Master Quest version. And that was the first time anywhere in, I believe, the West had even seen that. So that was an added bonus. But for me, um, I very quickly got over this whole cel-shaded thing. Um, games for me were always about the experience. And if you played every single Zelda game, which I believe I had at that point, um, you just wanted more Zelda. So I was never really perturbed or put off by the cell shady kind of kiddiness. Um, and actually, Legend of Zelda Wind Waker is actually a very, very deep game and one of my personal favorites. Um, it recently got the HD treatment on the Wii U and again I purchased it and I just absolutely had a ball. So any of you that haven't played this or think that it looks too kiddie, please get past that because there are some of the most beautiful uh, moments in this game, um, more so as you progress into the game and I would highly recommend that you do go and pick this title up. I think as well that I remember reading that Nintendo was trying to add more character uh, into the models of the character and I remember reading uh, reading an article um, about the big eyes that some of the characters would have um, in order for them to kind of uh, show off more character so again this was kind of like a slightly different approach but I, I really never understood the backlash against the whole cell shadedness because what this has enabled the game to do is look as good as it was almost well, how long ago is it now? Uh, 12 years ago, I think it came out. I think it was, again, was 2003. So, no, maybe 13 years. Um, and if we look at classics such as A Link to the Past on Super Nintendo, because of that art style, which you could say is somewhat anime, cartoony, it holds up really well. Whereas when you try to make uh, the world look too real, uh, sometimes, you know, it has that effect which makes it not look as real. So I think you you could say quite safely that this game has held up very well. It's a fantastic game, and it's because of the art style that they used in it. And if they made another Zelda game using this, like they are with Breath of the Wild, which I'm very happy about, I think that we can enjoy these games for many, many, many years after they were originally released without really needing to have an HD upgrade. So here we see young Link uh, running around, uh, and this is right at the very beginning of the game, um, and he's trying to find his special uh, tunic, which his grandmother has got for him. So um, I'm gonna say goodbye from myself, Nintendo GBR. I hope you've enjoyed looking back at these GameCube titles with me, and uh, please let me know what you think. Apologies for uh, the lateness of getting this next segment up I've been very very busy but please support me give me a thumbs up subscribe tell your friends and there will be another episode coming very soon
And let's not forget people, in just a few days we will know all we need to know about the Nintendo Switch as it is going to be fully unveiled on January the 12th slash 13th. I cannot wait and I hope the Nintendo Switch will bring us even more memories in many many years. This has been Nintendo GBR and I am now signing off. Thanks for watching.